What is up guys, what's going on? It's Dread and I'm back with another video. Today, we got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Their draft was interesting. They're setting themselves up for the future. That's, that's what's happening with this team. They got Kyle Trask to replace Tom Brady once he retires. On defense, they went out and got Joe Tryon. He'll probably fill in for Jason Pierre-Paul once he goes. Um, their defensive line is older, so they're going to need guys that can still manufacture pressure. Uh, and the and Sue's probably gone in a little bit. McClendon, Golston, all those guys are a little bit older, so they're going to need someone to fill in once these guys start to leave. So today, we're going to hop in and see how these rookies impact this team. Um, we're going to put them in starting positions, so that means Brady and Jason Pierre-Paul are no longer starters. We're going to try to trade them, see how we can help fix the team I guess kind of a way to cheat the system a little bit but we're gonna do it anyways um, so that's the first thing I'm gonna do is trade those guys and then we're gonna, in, gonna get into the regular season and see if we can make the playoffs which this team's amazing so I'm sure we will alright for the first trade I wanted to help our offense out make it as easy as possible for Kyle Trask so we went out and got Brandon Brooks to play right guard he's gonna replace uh, Alex Kappa I think that's his name um, I'm pretty sure that's who plays right guard for them uh, he's gonna replace him Sucks for Alex Kappa, not gonna happen in real life, but I like the move for us right here. All right, this next trade is not as impactful, but we get tackle help. Donovan Smith is super old. He's gonna probably retire after this season, so we got Brian O'Neill. Please tell me that's his name. I think it's Brian O'Neill. He's gonna fill in for him. Um, I really love this team now. We're making the playoffs. I'm not gonna be surprised if we go to the Super Bowl because Kyle Trask is gonna develop a ton this season with the weapons he's got and this phenomenal offensive line. Uh, so yeah. I'll see you guys at the playoffs. All right, guys. It looks like we got a first round. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Um, I have never seen that before. 37 and four and our backup quarterback throws a touchdown too. That's insane. Pretty mediocre from the running game in terms of yards per carry, but a lot of touchdowns. Receiving Mike Evans, great. Chris Godwin, okay. Gronk had 11 touchdowns. Let's go. Let's go. That's crazy. That's crazy. Levante David with 100 tackles. Tons of interceptions, it looks like. Let's check the sacks first. Nine and a half for Shaquille. Joe Tryon, nowhere to be found. Only one sack. That's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. Six interceptions for Carlton Davis. Four for Jamel Dean. Two for David. Two for Whitehead. Two for Antoine Winfield. Our team is so good. Obviously, um, I knew we were gonna be good. I didn't think we'd go 16 and 0, but that's pretty crazy. We're gonna upgrade players and uh, simulate this first playoff game. See if we get the win. All right, our first game is against the Seahawks. They're only like nine and seven, I think. I don't really think they can compete with the 16 and 0 team, and they don't come close. We're upgrading players and getting into the next one. All right, we're going up against the Packers. They're also nine and seven, not that great, but uh, you never know. You never know. And uh, we do get the win. It's much closer, but we get the win. We're going into the Super Bowl against the Chiefs. We're actually going to hop in and play this one, so let's get into it. All right, we're getting into the game. It's all about Kyle Trask, so we're just going to play offense. Our defense is going to have to hold up against Patrick Mahomes. No easy task. They're going to get the ball first, and they are not going to even pick up a first down. We're rolling out the offense now. It's our turn to do some damage, and we're going to start out running the ball because... Because it is Kyle Trask, you know? Um, obviously, he played really well in simulation, but this offensive line is ridiculous, and his wide receivers are ridiculous. So I would hope he would play well. Still surprised by how, just how well he did, but they should do really well. I mean, I think the lowest overall guy on this offensive line is a 78 overall young player who's probably much higher now. I didn't actually... I don't actually remember what he was got to, got to off the top of my head, um, but it's good. I can tell you that. <laughs> um, let's see what we see. Let's see what we got. We're gonna go to Mike Evans here. Honestly, good coverage by 21. Is that Breland? I may have totally just insulted someone because Breland ain't it. But um, yeah, I uh, I really like what this Buccaneers team is doing. They obviously had something that worked last year. They played phenomenal in every phase of the game. Um, really every position group is excellent and they performed like it last year and they brought back every single starter I'm pretty sure I think that was the big thing they did was they brought every single person back they got back Chris Godwin Shaquille Barrett Levante David all the everyone Tom Brady they all came back um, and I love that 
there are a decent amount of older players, which is somewhat concerning, I guess. But, you know, every team has that. And this team has a lot of young stars, too. Chris Godwin, Mike Evans, Devin White, all these good young players. Antoine Winfield, uh, Vita Vea, all sorts of young talent. Um, I just think they're really, really good, honestly. Like, it, quarterback is the big question mark. And they obviously took Kyle Trask with the idea that he would be replacing Tom Brady in a year or two, I assume. And he's he's gonna get mentored by the greatest quarterback of all time. That's that's big. That's that that's gonna help him a ton. I mean, obviously, whether or not it's gonna help put him in the Super Bowl, I don't really know. But obviously, it worked for us here. It worked for us here. Um, but yeah, I'm curious to see what you guys think of what they did this off season. You guys like them bringing back everybody else? Do you think they should have uh, should have made some other moves? Tried to bring in some new players? Um, I mean, yeah, let me know what you guys think right there. Thought we had an easy touchdown, but Mike Evans, the beast red zone wide receiver, drops it. Because that's that's what would happen to me. That's what would happen. Uh, and Rojo, oh, I tried to cut it back, but I made my move too late. Instead, ran right into the defender. Uh, I think we need to let the clock run out first. Um, let's try to get into the shotgun, give, our, give Kyle Trask a little more time to work here. And instead, I'm an idiot and run. Whatever, we're just going to go for it. We're just going to go for it. I still think we got a touchdown here. Mike Evans is a beast. We're going to we're gonna run the ball. We're going to give it to Rojo. I changed my mind. See what he can do. And <laughs> Juan Thornhill clocks him. There's a nice hole right there, but Thornhill filled it perfectly. You know, we're going to be smart. We're going to take the points when we can get them. I, I want the points against the Chiefs. That's And we're, it's smart. We just got the ball back. We just got the ball back. Um, beautiful. But yeah, what do you guys think? Of, what do you guys think of this Buccaneers offseason? Do you like the pickups of uh, of Kyle Trask and Joe Tryon? Tryon obviously didn't have an impact really here in this uh, in this rebuild fantasy or not fantasy uh, franchise simulation. Um, he didn't do much for us, but uh, I think he's got some potential. Um, I like Washington. And I think he played really well there. So. He could, uh, there's a bad pass from Kyle Trask. Mike Evans was wide open, and that's going to make it hard for us to convert here. But we'll still find a way to get it done. Um, but yeah, I like the move. I think I think you can never have enough edge pressure, especially with some guys that don't always stay healthy and Jason Pierre-Paul. Uh, getting some help there is good, and Jason Pierre-Paul could be gone in a year or two. He's getting older, so... To have someone like that that can get trained up, sort of, and get ready to fill in for him whenever he does leave. I like the move. I don't think it was crazy, crazy big need for them, but I I like investing in defensive linemen or pass rushers, whatever. And I think he's going to be able to do that well. I'm pretty sure that's what they drafted him to be. Really hope I'm not wrong about that. Um, but... Uh, I think he's. I think he's got potential. I like the. I like the situation they're in. I can't really see anything else that I think they desperately needed. Um, so I, I like the move. I like the move. Kyle Trask in. I believe the second round is. I like that pickup too. I think it's again just setting themselves up for the future. He's obviously not going to play this year unless Brady gets hurt or something. Um, but they needed a, they needed an option. Brady's not going to be around forever. As good as he is, he's probably only got a year or two left. Then again, I've also been saying that for probably five years now. Um, I assume that uh, Kyle Trask will probably get a chance to start in the next couple of years. We'll see. Um, right there, we got a huge hole. We're going to go up and get a pretty big gain running the ball. Um, Obviously, this played out phenomenal for us. If Kyle Trask does get the chance to start, he is in a dream situation. Uh, you really can't get any better than this. All the weapons they have are ridiculous. I mean, so many talented wide receivers, so many talented tight ends. Mike Evans, beautiful touchdown catch right there. Takes the hit from Juan Thornhill, and this time he hangs on to it. That's a touchdown. That's what we like to see. Defense needs to hold up against Mahomes again. That would be really, really nice. And it doesn't look like we're going to. Yeah, they score a touchdown. Unfortunate. We're going to take it to halftime, and we're going to get the ball right back with the chance to score again. Um, but, yeah, if Kyle Trask does get the chance to start, he's coming into a dream situation. These receivers are so talented. And the tight ends, O.J. Howard's coming back. A lot of people forget about him. He's coming back. He's good. He's very talented, and he's got a lot higher potential than what he's reached so far. 
Gronkowski is obviously great both in the run game and he can still be a big playmaker in the passing game as we saw in the Super Bowl. Chris Godwin is going to be wide open for a big pickup. And I think that's Jerry Sneed misses him. We get the juke inside. Juan Thornhill misses, and that's a touchdown. We go all the way on that play. Chris Godwin, what a play, man. So underrated in my opinion. I love Chris Godwin. Had a rough rough stretch in the playoffs where he was dropping some passes, but he's, he's very, very talented, I think. Um, and we're going to get the ball right back again. This is looking very good. I forgot to turn down the quarter length down. Usually I only run four-minute quarters. We're playing a little bit longer here, so I guess, uh, <laughs> oops, I don't know. Not a big deal. And he's going to be open again. He's going to make another tough catch. Well, that was the first tough catch, but he's going to make the catch. Beautiful play. <laughs> he's cooking right now. That is exactly what we need. Uh, we're going to set you clock on because we want to take as much time off the clock and not let Mahomes score. Um, yeah, what was I talking about? I was talking about the tight ends too. Gronk and OJ Howard, phenomenal duo. But then you also have Cameron Brait. Cameron Brait was really good in the playoffs for the Buccaneers this year. Like it, it didn't make a ton of catches or anything, but he had plenty of plays and he's consistent. He's a consistent option. He doesn't really drop passes. And uh, Brady would find him time and time again in a lot of clutch situations, it seemed like. Um, you can't ask for more than that out of a tight end, especially a number three tight end, you know? Um, I mean, we'll see how it shakes out with O.J. Howard coming off of a major injury, but but Cameron Brait was very, very good. People need to not forget about him either. All, all those guys, are they're stud playmakers. Um, this team is just so, so set up for success. It just is. I love pretty much everything about it um we'll see what happens they do have some big time teams to compete with great throw from kyle trask on the run hits mike evans for another touchdown we're cooking right now this chiefs defense can't do anything to stop us we have way too many guys to go to on this offense for them to be able to just i mean they can't do anything they can't do anything right now they do however score only a field goal i thought they were gonna go all the way for a touchdown we'll take that we'll take the stop um but yeah i mean we may never get to see Kyle Trask play. If Brady goes for a while and Kyle Trask just sits behind him, people may not give him a chance. Um, he clearly had some weaknesses in college, but he clearly had a lot of strengths too. Uh, there's, there's, he was, I think a lot of people thought he was going to go in the first round for a long time. And it didn't like until this last season, he kind of, kind of fell out of that consideration. He went down to a second round prospect, but I think he still has potential to be as good as any of those first round guys well okay he has the potential to do it he can do it he's can be an accurate smooth pocket passer like those other quarterbacks he's not going to be crazy like justin fields trevor lawrence trey lance and i guess zach wilson have the opportunity to be but i still think he can do it he can do a lot of good for this team but they won't need him to and honestly when you look at quarterbacks and the quarterbacks that have found a lot of success in the nfl those quarterbacks sit and they learn from a good mentor for a while, it seems like, you know? I mean, Aaron Rodgers sat behind Brett Favre and learned behind him, and he turned out to be phenomenal. Um, uh, Tom Brady sat and learned behind what? It would have been Drew Bledsoe, right? I think. And look at him. He didn't start right away. Patrick Mahomes sat and learned behind Alex Smith and then became an absolute stud quarterback. Lamar Jackson sat and learned behind Joe Flacco. Obviously not the greatest comparison. I'm just trying to think of newer quarterbacks that sat and learned before they stepped onto the field. He didn't sit as long as these other guys did, but he sat and learned, and then he came out, and he played great, and he's been great since then. I mean, struggles in the playoffs and stuff, but he's still a really solid quarterback. These guys, most successful quarterbacks take time to learn the position, and Kyle Trask's, Trask is going to have that. And I think that's a really underrated advantage for a quarterback nowadays. I mean, you look at my team, the Giants. Daniel Jones was rushed out onto the field. He only had two or three games to learn before they put him out there. And he struggled. He's shown flashes of being brilliant at times. I mean, his first game, he played phenomenal. But he's also turned the ball over so much more than you can. I mean, you just can't do that. And it's... You know, that could be the struggles of a young quarterback. So I like the quarterbacks that have gone into positions where they're going to have someone good to learn from or at least someone to mentor them somewhat while they learn from coaches and stuff like that. Like, I like the I like the Kyle Trask situation more than, like, Justin Fields, you know? 
or Zach Wilson. I like Trey Lance more than those guys. I mean, Trey Lance has got Garoppolo. That's not the best, but Garoppolo's been to the Super Bowl, so I don't really care what people say. He's still a Super Bowl quarterback. I, you know, and Trey Lance is going to have the ability to learn from them. I mean, Justin Fields has Andy Dalton, who's found some success. He'll be able to help somewhat, maybe, but nothing crazy. Uh, but guys like Zach Wilson, who the heck is Zach Wilson going to learn from in New York? That's that's what's scary to me about like the situation for New York is they have a defensive-minded head coach. They don't have any great veteran mentorship on the team for Zach Wilson. Like, who's going to coach him up? And I know, I know, uh, I know Robert Sala is a great head coach. I just for a young quarterback, something like that. I feel like I want a young. Uh, smart, experienced, offensive head coach. And right now, they don't really have any of that. But, you know, you have no idea how any of this is going to turn out. Kyle Trask has a long time before he's going to be given a shot, so we're not going to see it for a while. But uh, I like the potential he has there. Obviously, right now, we cooked the Chiefs. We played phenomenal. Whole team did great at every level for us, and that's exactly what we needed. I think there's a ton of potential for that to actually happen. We will see if it does. I have no idea. This next season is a complete mystery to me. I have no idea how things are going to go. But I'm so excited for it. Um, thank you guys for clicking on the video. I hope you loved it. Let me know what you guys think about the Buccaneers offseason, about them getting Kyle Trask and Joe Tryon. Um, I love to hear what you guys have to say. So let me know. Uh, keep your eyes open for more videos. I'm going to keep putting it out. Like and subscribe for more stuff coming out soon. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace, guys.